G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now this is a bit of a surprise pattern today. It's a surprise because I actually got around to doing it. I did promise you all a little rag doll, a person rag doll, um, and it's been a while since I promised that. So here she is, and I'm cross at myself for not doing it sooner now because I had the best time this week. Um, I think she's absolutely adorable and I hope you like her too. So she's the number one, she's the first time I've ever made an actual doll So in a pattern. So there you go. Um, I hope you'll all enjoy her. Now I've got a free pattern all ready for you and all you need to do is find that link. It is in the description box below. I'll put it number one in the comments for you also so it's easy to find. Now you'll be able to print out your templates on your own home printer. What you need to do is make sure that you set your printer to be printing at actual size so that all of her little pattern pieces fit beautifully which is what you want and uh, there's also a measuring bar on your pattern templates that you'll see check that before you start cutting out um, so that everything is spot on. So who's ready to make my first ever patchwork doll? Let's start with our materials and requirements to make our little rag doll. So we're going to start with our bodice pieces for the top of our body. Body's made in two pieces. So the way that I put this one together is the print that I choose for the bodice section is the same print that I'm going to use to make the little skirt and possibly the neck ruffle, which I have a pattern for, for you also. So it just makes it easier. It's a way of making a little dress without actually having to construct a, a very uh, complicated little dress. So this is a print I've chosen that's going to be the overall, overall look for my outfit. So I have my body front piece there, and then I have two body back pieces, and they are, all of these pieces are interfaced with a, a fusible woven cotton interfacing which keeps everything nice and flexible so we've got those pieces there now the next step is our we need our little leg pieces so we've got two pieces there you can see I've just got my right sides together they're ready for sewing and that will be a print um, that I've chosen that will coordinate with my little skirt and it will also uh, contrast and and look uh, suitable for the legs so some little stockings or leggings so we've got those two pieces there they are also interfaced as well and then we're going to need our arm pieces so my arm pieces I use the same fabric as I am using for the head so that that looks like the same little uh, skin tone and this is just a simple creamy kind of a, a linen look and we need two pairs. I already have one of my little arms already constructed and filled and they also have that fusible interfacing on them. Then we're also going to need our head pieces. So our head pieces are our side front head pieces. I give my little doll, my rag doll, a seam at the front of the head because classically rag dolls are sewn together with two flat pieces but I really don't like that very flat face look. I like to give it a little bit more dim dimension which is why this front head piece is split in two and it's very simple, still keeps the pattern very simple to make. And then we've got our back head piece which is cut in one piece there. These all have that same fusible interfacing applied. Now when you come to do the little ears, what I do is I have my a piece of fabric that matches my the same head color and I've just folded, I folded that in half, right sides together, press that nice and flat, and then I've traced around my ear shapes. So then what we're going to be doing is sewing directly on that line, rather than tracing around a shape, cutting it out, and then trying to tuck something that small under the machine. It's much easier to do it this way. So just get those two ears, traced on ready for us to stitch and then we will cut those out leaving a little seam allowance so they're all ready to go that piece of fabric does not have any interfacing on because those those ears are very small so now in addition to those pieces we've got our head pieces which are our hair pieces so we've got our hair pieces which are going to go on and create our bangs at the front, our little fringe section, and also the back of the head. 
there and we're going to be fusing that one onto place now i'm keeping this a really funky little modern style doll so i'm using all of my bright colors so she's going to have some very very wild pink hair but of course you can go with your neutral tones um, whatever you like will work with this little doll just because of the style of it and then to top that off um, of course we're going to have our little felt yo-yos that we're going to make which, which draw up and make little circles that we can stack together and make I'm making the two little two little um, I call them little knots p-tail knots on either side little buns you can make a single bun on the top of the head especially if you're going for a bit of a ballerina look which this little doll looks beautiful with a single ballerina bun I'll give you an idea of how that looks when we get there uh, when we're constructing that head so I actually have I've got six pieces here because we're going to be stacking these um, and we need three for each little bun so we're also going to need some eyes and I'm just using some tiny black buttons here they're nice and flat I'm using buttons you could use safety eyes but I think with this project we're really keeping for that homemade sort of ragdoll look so buttons I think look best um, and we're keeping it all very simple also uh, we're just adding a little stitched mouth I'll just be using a bit of red pearl thread there couple of eyelashes again just using the black pearl thread and you will need your your colored uh, coordinating extra strong threads for your construction so that's about it if you have a wool felting needle that's going to come in really handy for when we're stuffing and of course our stuffing is polyester filling and another couple of useful tools for this one are your forceps if you have them they're great for stuffing and turning so our first step in this one we're going to start with the body first so let's begin with the torso pieces and we're going to start with our back torso pieces now there's an opening that's going to be left in the back of this one because we're going to be jointing the head of course I didn't mention that you will need your neck joint now you don't have to joint this one if you want to go ahead and uh, just stitch this head on you can do that but if you are jointing you will need your 30 millimeter neck joint I will grab mine in a moment and show you um, and that can be a cotter pin joint or my style of jointing I will put a link to a video up the top here for you that gives you some ideas about jointing that that will help you so but with this one I am going to be jointing my head so we are going to be using that back opening so what I've done with those two pieces you've got marks on your pattern templates that show you where the back opening is I've first gone ahead and just stitched within my seam allowance a very close zigzag that just seals those two edges and stops them from fraying keeps everything nice and flat and uh, it makes it easier because remember we're going to be stuffing through that that little opening and we don't want that to fray away so that's your first step if you are jointing the head if you are sewing the head on your first step will be to stitch that center back seam with a four millimeter seam allowance from top to bottom there and I sew everything two times for strength because we're going to be really packing the filling in there so that's if you're going to be sewing the head on you sew the whole back seam up if you're going to be jointing your head as I am you just sew from the top of the neck just to your first mark and from the bottom of that opening to the lower lower edge of your pattern piece there so again keep your stitches nice and small I set my machine stitch length to uh, number two and that way it keeps everything nice and, and tight and tidy so I'm going to get those two pieces stitched together sewing those two times so that has my seam my back center seam stitched and because I'm jointing my head I've left that opening there you can see I've gone ahead and pressed that seam open and flat if you are not jointing the head and you're sewing it on your whole seam will be stitched but still go ahead and press that seam open nice and flat so our next step is to join the top torso to the lower legs of the body 
and we're going to do that simply by putting right sides together the front and the back of the legs are the same so it really doesn't matter which side you, you attach to each side at this stage so we're just going to line up those edges and we're going to stitch across two times with that same four millimeter seam allowance and we will have that one and then we're going to do exactly the same with the other side and stitch this one across and then we will have our full two body pieces ready now once you have those two top sections join to your lower body also press those and press those seams facing downwards so our next step now is just to sew our side seams so what you want to do is line everything up there from the neck edge now this little cut out square section is where we're going to be adding our inserted arms so that little square section we don't stitch so you're going to stitch the same four millimeter seam allowance from the top neck edge just to this just this curve here you're going to stitch leave this open and then you're going to stitch all the way down around those legs and back up again and repeat on the opposite side and again keep to your four millimeter seam allowance and sew that one two times right so once we have that body all stitched together there i've gone ahead and i've taken my sharp little scissors and just clipped into those very tight curves so the little crotch seam around the tips of those feet and just these shoulder seams here so our next step is to get our arm sections ready for those arms and the way that i do that i'm going to show you here that i've opened out and press finger pressed each seam below that arm and above that arm on the shoulder I've pressed it nice and flat and then I've brought those two edges together it's like making a little box corner on a bag if you've done that before so keeping those seams nice and flat and lining them up in the center I just use a little wonder clip there and hold that one in place it's just going to get it nice and flat for while ready while we're preparing the arms so I'm just going to repeat that on the opposite side and we can put that one aside for the moment so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our arms so you can see I've got that little one all done there very simple the top section stays open we've got right sides together and we're just going to sew that same four millimeter seam allowance from the top all the way down around up to that top edge again sewing it two times and making sure that you back and forth on the start and finish do stay within that four millimeter seam allowance because they're a very narrow little arm and you want them to be easy enough to turn you can turn that arm through once you have stitched that up and you can see there that I've gone ahead and just added some polyester filling using my forceps and I've really packed that in there so it's a really nice firm little arm but only up until about about two centimeters from the end or about just uh, under an inch from the end keep that top section nice and free of any filling so that when those arms are put in they will sit nice and flat down at the sides of our doll so I'm just going to stitch across the top of that arm there so that it's nice and neat and tidy and then we will pop them into our body so now let's add those arms so what we're going to do is I'm going to keep holding that that little section while I remove one of those clips now what we're going to do we've got remember we've got to have at the front of our body here so our back opening is here so we need our arm curved towards the front we're going to go in through that neck area and we're going to tuck that arm in this might seem a little tricky but it's really the best way to get a great little arm joint that will sustain a little doll being carried around by the arms and we're hoping these little dolls will be loved and carried everywhere it's just much stronger than a a, uh, a button joint which is often used in rag dolls and you can see I'm pulling that arm through there you can use your forceps for this if that helps and what you want is to get those edges lined up 
pulling that one across and you can see that that little edge of that arm will just fit exactly across the width of that opening. You can see that there. Now it doesn't hurt to extend it out a little bit so you're absolutely sure that you're capturing all of those edges and what we're going to do now is where we had that clipped we're simply going to stitch across back and forth a couple of times to really secure especially on the edges that little arm into that shoulder seam and then we just repeat the same process with the other arm making sure those little arms are curved forward to the front of the body. I now have both of those arms nicely stitched into place and I'm taking my forceps and I'm just going to turn that body through. So best way is to go from the toes, push right through, right up through that neck, grab the other foot, take it all the way through, pull that body through, use your knitting needle or something like that to push out all of your seams, get them all rolled out nice and flat and then we will give the lower section of our body a press. When you have that body all turned through and all those seams pushed out and have that lower section pressed, what we're going to do, there's a little pattern template that you have within your templates and it's just a little leg bend guide. That's what it's called, it looks like this. All you need to do is line that up with the crotch opening there and you've got a center seam, just line it up with the center and you can see that I've just gone across and ruled those two lines across there ready. We've got to do it now when everything is nice and flat so that they're correct. So those lines I'm going to stitch straight over the top of but keep them quite light in colour. Um, they won't be seen because they'll be the actual bend in the little leg. So what we do now is we go ahead with our forceps and we fill those legs with our polyester filling but we stop that filling again about two centimetres from that line there and that will allow us to then tuck these little hips under the machine and stitch across and that will secure that stuffing and keep it down at the lower end and it will also give us a nice little bend in that body so that she can sit nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and pack those those lower legs just as firm as we did those arms. So there you can see those legs filled nice and firm and then I've stitched across each of those lines so now that filling will stay exactly where it should. And so our next step, depending on how you're going to add the head. Now, if you're going to be sewing the head into place, you can go ahead now and fill the rest of that body and you can fill it nice and firm just as you did with the legs. And then both these uh, next stages we do whether you're filling that body and sewing the head on or whether you're jointing. Now, if you're jointing, we leave this body empty for now because we're going to attach the head through this back opening here and fill later. So either way, we take a double strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch all the way around that neck edge only about four or five millimeters in from that neck edge starting at the back left the tail lens hanging so what I can do now is pull on those threads and pull that right in so if you're jointing the head you want to leave just enough room for that neck bolt to fit through so make sure that you do that and then you knot that off at least four times. If you have filled that body ready to sew the head on, just pull those ends in nice and tight and knot that off as well over your stuffing and that will be ready. So let's get started on the head and now the first thing we're going to have to do is get our, our ears ready. So remember I showed you that I had traced around my pattern template just in a marker and I'm going to stitch directly now. It's right sides together. I've got that press together, drawn around my template and then I've just gone ahead and stitched around the outside curve. Make sure that you back and forth on the start and finish because when we turn it through, it puts a bit of pressure on there. You only need to sew it once 
um, because they're not being filled, those ears. And then all we need to do is just trim that one off. So I'm going to cut straight down that line, the front of the ear, and just gonna leave a tiny seam allowance. And it's just much easier to do it this way than to try and tuck a tiny little piece under the machine and keep it all, keep its shape well. So just a tiny seam allowance and then you just need to turn that little ear through and give it a press and you'll end up with this which is your tiny little ear you can just stitch that edge together so that they are ready to pop into the head when we've got that all ready so I'll get that one turned through and pressed and we can put those aside and our next step while I'm pressing is I'm going to be adding my felt pieces to the back of the head. So I've removed my backing paper. Remember we have fusible webbing on the back of these felt pieces. Make sure you line it up exactly with the top of the head there. Get that one pressed into place and the same with the front pieces. You'll find that they line up beautifully with the top of the head and that front center seam. This will be the front of our face get those pressed into place and then we need to treat the edges in some way. So we need to stitch them on just to finish those edges. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch on the machine that's very close together and quite small. I'm going to use a uh, coordinating thread, so a pink of the same colour. Depending on your project, you might want to do a contrasting thread or darker or lighter totally up to you what you do there or you might want to just hand sew a blanket applique stitch on those pieces there so I'll get those all positioned into place here are my face piece, face pieces head pieces with that stitching done and you can see it just gives it that zigzag on the machine gives it such a clean flat result I really love it really looks like a little professional little doll done that way so our next step is to sew our center front seam. Now here's where you have to be super careful to make sure that you are lining up the hair section there because that's your center part basically in your hair and you really want it lined up because if you have it slip and your center part is just not quite right, it will annoy you. It would annoy me anyway so I really make sure that's lined up and you can go ahead and just stitch but I like to sew just a tacking stitch first so that I really make sure that that little section holds its place there and when I sew this on the machine I still sew it two times but I will sew this top section of the hair in a, con in a sorry a matching color so that it's that seam, the center seam of the hair there, it will be hidden and then I continue on with a matching thread for the cream of the face so it all stays very tonal there. So there we go, that's what your center front seam should look like and I've gone ahead then and I've just clipped those curves of that front face, make sure you don't snip into your stitching, it just helps that front face curve really well pop that one through and make sure that you really roll out those seams to give us a nice smooth finish. You can see that hairline has joined up beautifully there. And our next step is to add the ears to the back of the head. Now all I've done is lined each ear up with the curved part at the top of course and it starts right on the edge so the lower side starts right on the edge of that hairline there and I've just stitched it temporarily on there within that seam allowance so that it's easier for us to manage so now all we need to do is sew our front head to our back head and you should have a mark on your pattern piece that shows you the center of the head and you just want to line that up with the center seam in the front of the head there just open that seam out and you can take a pin straight through the center and make sure it is going straight through that seam and then it's just a matter of clipping or pinning that side seam 
all the way down, lining up that neck edge. Do the same on the other side. And then we stitch from the neck edge. Make sure you back and forth all the way around. And do make sure that top seam is centered and make sure that you're back and forth on the other side. And again, we sew that one as a four millimeter seam allowance and two times. So once you have that head stitched all the way around, you can clip the little curves there on the side of the neck if you wish, and just a little bit at the top of the head. We're just gonna turn that one through and push out all those seams with our knitting needle. And now we're ready for filling. Now we're going to pack this head nice and firm. Um, and again, the firmer you pack them, the longer they last. As I said, this little doll we're hoping is going to be carted around everywhere and loved absolutely to death. So the firmer that head is packed, the longer that uh, doll will keep its shape. So pack it all in there. And here's where your wool felting needle will come in handy if you have one. We're going to pack that all the way to the neck edge. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're going to be um, adding this with a joint or whether you're going to be sewing it on we're still going to fill it right up we're going to leave a little bit of room if you're sewing it on because we're going to want to turn those edges under before we sew that head on so give yourself a little bit of room about a centimeter if you're going to be sewing the head on otherwise you can pack almost right up to the edge if you're using a joint now do make sure you sp pay special attention to this front seam. You want it all pushed out evenly. And um, it's going to be our center focal point of our doll. And you really want that front section pushed out because we're gonna add a little smile here that is going to pull that in a little. So make sure that every curve is pushed out nicely. So I'm gonna get that one all filled up and I will show you how that looks. So that has my little uh, head all filled out nice and firm and you can see there along the side there you've got that nice little slope of the face and the little chin at, chin at the bottom there which we really need to fill out and you can see I've used my wool felting needle to get in there and tuck all of those fibres in and I've got it very flat there just a little way from the edge. Now remember I'm using a joint. If you are sewing the head on at this stage what you would do I've actually put a drawstring around mine that's ready. So I've sewn a doubled strand of extra strong thread, a running stitch all around that lower edge. I've left my tail ends hanging so that I can pull that in and tie around my little neck joint. Now, if you're going to sew the head on, don't worry about that running stitch. Just tuck those edges under and you can just tack those little edges under for now. And then of course you would already have your body made and filled. This is just a little sample body that I keep. And you can see that one is all drawn in around the neck the way yours would be. And it's a simple matter of pinning that little one into place all around that neck edge and slip stitching that one into place. So we're gonna move ahead and joint this one. So I've got my drawstring there ready. I've got my 30 millimeter joint. Mine is a bolt system. Yours might be a cotter pin. And now we just have to draw up those threads around that bolt. And we want to get that as close in around that bolt as possible. And then we just need to knot that one off at least four times. So our next step is to add the eyes. Now here's where you can get very creative with this one. I'm keeping this little doll very plain um, and very, very simple in design. So I'm just going for those little black buttons. I've used teddy bear eye placement pins for me to get an idea of where those eyes are going to sit. And also remember the technique we're using, we're gonna be pulling those buttons in a little. So they are, are going to recess a little, which gives us a little bit more expression. So you could use teddy bear eyes, that would be absolutely fine. Um, and so I've got those positions marked out. Remember, the wider the eyes are apart, the younger the doll looks. If you bring them close together, it tends to age the doll. So and none of us want more aging, I'm sure. Um, so, I, and you can even measure from that center seam, providing your center seam is nice and straight, and you can make sure you get those exactly in the right spot. So what I've then gone and done 
is I've taken a double strand of extra strong thread and I've taken it through my button through and back again and then taken the four ends through my large doll needle and so I've made a hole with my awl straight through the center there and I've taken it through to the back of the head so it's almost got a pathway to travel already done the same with the other side headed for the same spot and so now I'm just going to take that needle that doll needle and go straight in there and I want to come out somewhere right in the center of the back of that head there and pull that one straight through and then we've got that little eye nice and secure once we pull it in there you can see that one what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enlarge the exit hole there with my awl so I'm opening the fibers I'm not cutting anything just making it larger because now we're going to repeat that process with the other button and take that one through and we're going to come out that same hole there that I just made larger and now I have both eyes in place both those sets of four threads are coming out the back there through that same hole and I tied my first knot and so if you understand that we're tying off these eyes into the stuffing of the head not on the surface of the head so that knot is going to sink into the stuffing and it will be well hidden so I've tied my first knot I can give that a good tug and I can squeeze independently and pull on each lot of threads to pull in each eye as I go and when you have them nice and even keep that tension up and then you just knot that off into the back of the head at least four times then when you snip those thread ends it'll pop that knot will pop back inside the head and you can just close those fibers so once those eyes are in place we're going to add a tiny smile and we're going to do that in exactly the same way with our thread so I have a doubled strand this one's actually a five ply pearl thread I want a significant little red mouth so again we're going to start from behind you can see how that knot has gone back into the head there we're going to do the same with this one I'm going to take my needle through and this time I've marked out with just with pins I don't want to put a mark there just in case that spot isn't exactly where I want it now what we want is for that little mouth to curve and give an indication of a little chin here so it will pull in here a little but it will leave a little bit of chin so I've marked that out on both sides so I'm aiming to bring my needle out right on where that pin is which is just about there and pull that one through just as we did before we're going to leave some tail end hanging because we want to tie off and then I'm going to dive in the other side but I'm first going to make that hole larger just like we did last time increase the size of that hole and then I'm going to take my needle right in where that pin is By doing it this way we're pulling it from both sides so that we get that smile nice and even so again we want to come out through that hole that we've made at the back you find your needle wants to do that quite naturally now a little trick here with getting that mouth to um, sit in a little curve get your thread straight and parallel and you want to put your thumb there as you pull that one in and we want to encourage that little one down as we pull it in and we're going to pull it on both sides we've got both our threads there and it just gives it enough of a little curve there isn't that the sweetest little smile 
So I think that's all she needs. I'm going to add a couple of little eyelashes, but I think that's all she needs. You can pink up her cheeks if you like, and I might do that at the end once she's all done. But um, so that's all we need to do there with that little mouth. So pull, pull that in either side evenly as much as you like. Keep up that tension and knot off just the same way as we did with the eyes. So there I've got that little mouth all tied off nicely and also you can see I've come in from behind there and I've just used a single strand of pearl thread using the same technique come in from the back of the head and just made a couple of stitches to create a couple of little lashes out the side. Now you can get as creative as you like with the little face you can you could do embroidered eyes you can add a little nose anything that you like. I like that very simple little look. So that's it for her little facial features for me and now I'm going to move on and I'm going to be adding her little tiny hair buns. Now the way that we make those I've got a th little stack of three. Now I'm giving one her little two little buns either side. So you can see there that I will add those either side of the head and I will be adding a little button at the top and that's how we join it on and it's just the sweetest look. You can alternatively do a little center bun, which is as cute. And of course you could embellish these any way you like, ribbons and little flowers around the top there. But that's a really sweet look as well. So I'm going for the double little bun. And the way that we make these, if you haven't made yo-yos before, I've got your templates there and just there's three different sizes there. And I've just taken my extra strong thread and I'm just sewing around the edge with a very close little running stitch, very close to the edge because the felt is quite thick and when we draw it up we need there to be as less bulk there as possible. And so I'm just going to go around that entire one, we've got a tail end hanging there and end up here. Then we just pull those threads up and tie a little knot and we can pull those edges right in and you want to bring them in as tight as you can make sure that it's all nicely centered and then you simply just knot that one off three times and snip those thread ends a button will be covering that center section so I'm just going to get that one tied off so I'm now going to add my little buns to each side of the head. Now you can do this once your doll is all put together if you'd rather and sometimes that's a good idea because if you're not sure whether you're going to make two little buns or just the one in the centre it can help to have your whole doll all put together in front of you for you to have a look. Now I'm very sure that I want my two little buns. So you will notice that there is a small, a large and a medium. So the medium goes closest to the head, the large is in the middle and the small is on the top and it just gives a more of a, a realistic shape for that little bun. So I've got my little stack here already all made up and all I need to do is we're going to be attaching it with a button. So I've got my little button here all ready to go and what we're going to do is make our marks on our head. So I've got a little mark either side which shows me exactly where I want the centre of that bun to be. And I'm going to start with a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I'm going to go through my button and down through the centre and come out right in the centre and leave my tail ends hanging. And then I'm simply going to take a nice big stitch in and across. At my mark and then I'm going to come back up through the other side of all of my little yo-yos and out through the other side of the button. Doesn't matter whether you use a two hole or a four hole button, we only use two holes anyway. So then I can pull those, all of those threads up, check my position of that little bun, and then you just need to apply some pressure, compress all those layers, and knot off over that button just the way we have with our eyes and so on. 
just about four times and then you can snip those little thread ends. There we go, little buns in place. Space buns, that's what they're called. That's been driving me crazy the whole time. My, both my daughters used to, I used to do space buns in their hair. So there we go, I'm feeling better now. So now I do want to say too, where I've used felt here for the hair, you can absolutely, you can use fabric. It'll work just as well. I just like that the felt gives us a little bit more volume but totally up to you. You can certainly do some amazing hair with the little different color prints. So now our next step is to add our head to the body because we are jointing this one. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that bolt through the top of that drawn in neck there. Make sure that that fabric is all the way pushed down on that bolt. Add my second disc, my washer, and my nut. And if you haven't tried jointing before, definitely give it a go. Check out that jointing video that, that I put the link there for you of mine. It's really the easiest way to join body parts in soft sculpture. Once you um, understand the components, it's so simple. So I've just finger tightened that now so I can just check that I've got everything straight, everything is where it should be and then I will tighten that nut and I will just drop a little drop of super glue just in there just so that that nut will never come adrift and then we're ready to start filling that body. So you can see there I've gone ahead and filled my little doll's body and that's packed nice and firm. Make sure you get up in around those shoulder joints there and right down to the legs. And now I've taken my wool felting needle and I've just packed all that filling in so it's out of the way. And now we're going to close that back. Of course, you, if you've sewn the head on, you won't be needing to do any of this. So I've got my extra strong thread. I've got a single strand and I'm going to, you'll, because we press that seam, open and flat when, when we were constructing it, those little edges tuck under nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle in on the underneath just to where that seam begins. Just where it starts to open out. Now it's a ladder stitch that we're using to close this one. We've got a nice big knot on the end of my thread there a few knots on top of each other there because we don't want that one to pull through and now I'm going to put the link up the top there for my video that shows you how to sew a ladder stitch in case you haven't done one before but I'll show you a few stitches here so this is our starting point now we're going to cross over to the other side and we're going to come in and we're going to follow that little fold line all the way down so I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small and we're going to keep them even all the way down. So my first stitch goes across. Then we travel back again and we go into the hole that we first came out of and travel down just a little way, just as we did on the other side. I'm using a thread color that matches and in the case of when you're using a multicolored fabric, a darker thread is more invisible. So I'm pulling those stitches in as I go and now I'm going to cross back over again, take a little stitch a bit further down, travel down a little way. A bit tricky to show you on camera and get it right. There we go, keeping my stitches nice and even each time diving back into that exit hole that you first came out of. So that way the stitch is all linked. Make sure that as you go, you're pulling those threads up and giving it a good squeeze together as you go so that it, it does all pull in nice and tight. Um, you don't want to get halfway down and then try and pull all those threads up. You'll likely end up snapping your thread and it certainly won't knit together well. So just make your way down, right down until that opening is closed. So there I have my little completed little naked rag doll and she's all ready for her clothes. Now I'm going to be dressing her 
in her little skirt and her neck ruffle and then we're going to go on and I'm going to show you how to make a really simple little bag. Now I'm going to put the link up the top there for you for the neck ruffle and the skirt. I've got a, a video that shows you how to do that and there's a little necklace there. You may also want to make this little one up as a little boy doll and you can do that leaving off those little space buns of course and then you can add uh, perhaps the little overalls. So there's a few little different patterns there to fit these all these dolls. Check out my playlist and you'll see those there. I'm going to get her dressed up in her little skirt and neck ruffle. So here she is, my sweet little doll, all dressed in her little skirt and neck ruffle. You can see that I've just taken some colours from my print to make that neck ruffle. And, uh, and she's come up absolutely beautiful. So now I want to make her a little bag because all little girls love little bags. So I've got a pattern for you. I've got a pattern template there for you and we're gonna do it really simply. Now what I have is a, a, pat a bag pattern is cut from a piece of what I call felt fabric. Felt fabric is just simply a piece of print fabric and a piece of felt fused together with heat and, uh, heat and bond or your fusible webbing. Um, I usually just fuse a couple of rectangles together and I cut my pattern piece from that. So what you have is a nicely bonded but still flexible material that's a really good weight for this sort of project. So you're also going to need for a handle, it's around about 45 centimetres of braided cord in the color of your choice to match your project. And you can see there that I have added a couple of beads on the end, tied a knot and I'll just fray out that little bottom there. So we're basically going to be making just a tiny little tote bag, a crossbody bag. And this will be our handle and these little bead sections will show at the bottom there. So do check the size of the strap on your doll and make sure it is the length that you want, um, putting it over and around her crossbody um, and make sure that you've got that the right length. But I find if I cut it around about 45 centimetres, it gives me room to tie those knots because that also takes up a bit of your length um, and that just seems to fit her just right. Now on the front of this little bag, you can obviously do anything you like. I'm going to keep it nice and simple in keeping with the rest of my project. I'm just going to be adding a lovely bow there. I will actually stitch that on with a few little beads in the center. And with those beads at the side, that will be all I need because my doll is actually very, very bright. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you that I have First of all, just on each, across each end, just in our four millimeter seam allowance, I've just stitched a top stitch across each end in a coordinating thread. So it's just about giving it a really nice finish. And now I'm just going to blanket stitch each of those because that's the top edge of our bag. So I'm just gonna come in from behind, hide that knot where it won't be seen. I'm going to start my blanket stitch just a little way in because we're actually going to be sewing a seam down the sides. We won't be turning this through. So I'm going to start my first stitch just a little way in. So blanket stitch is just simply going through all of your layers and bringing your needle out through the loop. And the best part about doing that little top stitch is it's given you a guide so that your blanket stitching will be absolutely perfect. You can see I'm bringing my needle out through that loop each time and I'm using a variegated pearl thread it is an eight ply and it's a bit of a rainbow thread but it has all of the colors that I'm using in my project and you can also see that I've chosen the green because it's just that pop of color that is in my print and it really brightens everything up so you can see there I'm going to get that lovely bound finish there across each end. So I'm going to get both of those stitched. Now once you have your blanket stitching done, you can go ahead and embellish the front of that little bag any way you like. So I've gone ahead and added my bow with a couple of beads in the middle and just dropped a little jewel bead from the center there, give it a bit of a, a bit of a butterfly look there. So next step then is just to fold that one in half 
and we're going to take it to the machine and just as we did that top stitch in that coordinating thread I'm going to do the same thing to close the side each side of that bag just have to move my bow out the way to do that I'm going to stitch down each side so there you can see I've got my little bag all stitched together there and now I'm going to take that same pearl thread that I used before across the top and I'm going to sew a blanket stitch on along each edge but as I do so I'm going to incorporate that little handle and you can see I've started it at the base there where that first little bead starts and my first stitch is going to go in the base there through all of the layers just doing that same blanket stitch but bringing that cord into play as well so make sure that you anchor that you can do a couple of stitches on the first one just to keep that all in place try and keep it right on that edge it's a bit tricky getting caught up on things there we go and once you've got that anchored into place it's just a matter of continuing continuing your stitch along until that's on nice and firm and do the same at the top where you anchor that stitch in twice and then you pull the other side down and you repeat on the other side I have my finished little bag you can see how that stitch just incorporates that little braided cord beautifully and you've got the perfect little pretty little bag and how about tucking in a little teddy in there just so sweet so let's pop this little bag on my doll and have a look at it all together what an absolute sweetheart she's too perfect to be pink no she's just too perfect she's lovely and if you like the little dolls i've got a little bunny and so many of you have you had so many of you have made all of these we've got a little bear i can't even hold them all so there's a little bear little bunny we've got a little fox a little fox there and then there's also a little kitty but little kitty was stolen this week from my workroom by a lovely little granddaughter so um, it just shows you how popular they are and they really are my little granddaughter carries her little animal dolls around everywhere with her so look out for these patterns so you can get the little um, mama and baby series have a look at my mama and baby series and you'll find this little bear very simple and quick to make up and if you go through my videos list have a look at all of the little additions you could intermix with these patterns and add to there I've got all sorts I've got little puppies like that and all sorts I'm just absolutely thrilled with her you know I'm not a, a sort of a, a person doll person um, I do love my animals but I think she's just too sweet I hope you've really enjoyed her and I'm really looking forward to what you do and how much fun can you have with these little bags so remember you can make them for markets you're most welcome to uh, make product to sell using my patterns and uh, I wish you every success with that and I think that these little ones will go particularly well so thank you all for watching today you know it's not often that I get to the end of a project and uh, I want to make it all over again I've kind of fallen for this little one who to thunk it um, so I'm looking I want to make a whole row of all different colors maybe it's just the color I don't know but I won't need to because you're all going to do that for me aren't you so and I'm going to look for them on our Facebook page so I've put the link to our Facebook page uh, in the description box below so come along and join and uh, you'll be able to see what everybody else is doing with my patterns I want to see all of these little dolls turning up this week and I want to give a big shout out this week because I've seen on that page that there's a few of you very special people who are making my uh, making up my patterns as projects and creations and donating them to charity and that is the ultimate paying it forward how what beautiful souls you are 
thank you so much for paying it forward and uh, it's a great thing to do also do remember this one for making and selling uh, yourself I, I if that helps you along in your family that's absolutely wonderful so come and join that group if you haven't make sure that you subscribe if you haven't um, because what we want you with us and uh, contributing to this very positive community and um, you can keep talking to me on Instagram send me pictures via Instagram if you like um, and also talk to me in the comments I love to hear what you've got to say in the comments remember to always listen for that movie quote I'm trying to trick you all some people are just too quick and you know who you are too so look everybody have a fantastic creative week i hope this little one helps you do that and in the meantime stay safe and uh, most of all pay all of those good things forward till next time it's huru from me